So in this compilation video, we are gonna show you four different qualified professional techniques to waterproof your shower. That's right, there's more than one way to do it right. And we're gonna show you all of the greatest options that are available for DIY. So in the building industry today, I think the biggest weakness that we find with building technology is in the building code and how they address to build a shower. It is amazing to me that showers today are getting so much use and there's so much water running through them. It's like having a little mini rainforest in your house. And yet today the building code is still very substandard in a lot of districts. So what we're gonna show you today is four ways that you can waterproof your shower so that you can take a brand new shower that only lasts five years and you can convert it to something that's gonna give you at least 20 years of enjoyment. And we have a system in here at the end of this video that's gonna last longer than you. So stay tuned and we'll show you all the different systems. We have all of this done, now ready to tile. We're just going to uh, whip up some of our cement. We're using the Curdy membrane from Schluter System. This particular membrane, I uh, highly recommend you take the course if you're gonna do it professionally. If you're doing it in your own home, uh, make sure you get the right products. Not every store sells the products and the cements you need to get the job done properly. Uh, my supplier has a product that's a non-modified cement which means the longer it stays wet, the better it is. It also means it'll adhere to the back and the front side of this plastic membrane that we're buying. It looks like a cloth, but it's made of plastic. So traditional modified cement will not adhere to it. This is the problems you run into with people mixing the wrong product. Anyway, I've taken the course. It was a lovely two days down in Toronto. I'm Schluter certified. I've got the card. I got the hat. I got the t-shirt. They give you a t-shirt, Max. Anyway, we're going to put this on the wall. We're going to waterproof our entire tub. And then it doesn't matter what you put on top of this. Any product that you put on top of your waterproof membrane, the tile and the grout is no longer a waterproof system. Now it's a water diversion system. And so it's just for aesthetics. Um, it can also be removed and reinstalled at a later date. So because of the nature of our environment here, we're just going to go with some simple white glazed tile and make it nice and clean and hopefully in a few hours we'll have this all closed up. Curdy membrane system requires a non-modified cement or in other words cement. Uh, it's been like that for a few hundred years ever since the Romans started building tubs. Um, bottom line guys is uh, the last 20-25 years they've modified cement adding a latex polymer and the idea is it makes cement act more like a glue. So in a lot of applications that's handy, but depending on the products that you're working with and trying to combine together, adding that glue element can actually make it um, counterproductive. It can make products not work. You can't bond certain things with glue to certain other things. But with cements, you can bond just about anything. So when in doubt, go with the old fashioned stuff because the old fashioned stuff will still work with any modern building material, but the new stuff may not. So for this job, we're using the uh, non-modified cement from MapPie. It's called Carabond. It's a tile mortar. Um, it's available at uh, different MapPie dealers in town. I like it because it's silky smooth when you apply it. Because we're mixing cement for a curdy membrane, it's important to have a little bit of experience here because traditionally you mix your cement, you let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then that's your cement. After you've let it sit and set up, you can't add water ever again. So you got to get a little experience to know that something loose, where it's holding its own texture. This kind of cement right now is perfect. If you want to take a look at that. This kind of cement, where it's holding its own, it's not getting soupy. That's perfect for setting tile. But for a waterproofing membrane, it's too thick. We want to have something that's a little bit wetter. Okay, that doesn't hold up any, any stiffness to it. The reason for that is uh, Schluter gives you a special trowel to apply their products, and the grooves are actually quite small. So you don't want it granulated at all. You want it really silky smooth. When you put it on, you want it to be nice and wet because it does take a little bit of time to apply it. And you don't want it to start drying too fast before you get it all covered up. So now I'm applying cement to the wall. I have uh, marked my spot on the ceiling where I want my libel to go to. And because I'm in a hurry, my first goal is to just get a lot of smoke on the surface. 
And then I will trowel it out and get a better coverage in a second here. Everybody has a different technique. It doesn't really matter. The idea is you're not trying to scrape it off the wall. You're just trying to leave a relatively consistent amount on the surface. I uh, have a fair amount of experience doing drywall work. So I usually hold the trowel like I'm applying drywall mud. You don't have to worry about it getting on your fixtures or the tub or your shoes. It will all wash off. Okay, so this is the curdy membrane. I'm just using continuous sheet. Now, I don't recommend this until you've had experience working with this product. Because we are adhering this membrane, which is waterproof and vapor proof, to our drywall to make a waterproof wall. It's a really quite simple concept. This membrane will not allow anything in the way of moisture to pass through it. Which is why we were able to choose to go drywall on the substrate. And really all we're doing is applying this very similar to wallpaper. Okay, so we're going to make sure our joint's nice and tight in the corner. Stretch it out, get rid of air bubbles. And then just work it down like that. I also realize if you look at the damage that was on the wallboard of this original tile surround, it was just starting to mold from 1983. So this stuff here, the differences in the two systems is the old system didn't have a membrane. It was just drywall. And instead of using a cement, they used a glue. And that glue, although it's rated for showers, breaks down over time when it's wet. imperfect in every direction. Those showers are designed to last five to ten years with really good performance. And then usually by the time they start breaking down and people find out that they're really ugly and they want to do something about it, it's 20 years later and everybody's happy because it's such a low-cost investment. But the reality is nowadays people use their showers a lot more than they used to. So the same technology in a new shower People are expecting different performance. Back in the 1980s, you had a shower, you got a shower, you got done, you got out. Nowadays, we're adding different fixtures, rain shower heads, spa tubs, jacuzzis, all these things that are designed to have people spend time in their bathroom and not be in a hurry to leave. It's like an oasis from all the kids and traffic and busyness of life. So the average shower nowadays is seeing five to six times as much water every year than they used to. The length of showers are going up, the uh, amount of people in the home taking showers is going up. Uh, bathing culture, go, switching over to shower culture is huge. So now they have to perform at a higher rate on a more regular basis. So if you double the amount of water going through a shower and it was failing, it won't just become twice as bad. Instead of having a 20 or 30 year shower, you'll have a five year bathroom. And that's what we're seeing. Brand new builds, three to five years in, covered in mold, leaking through the ceiling. Now, a couple little notes. The installation of this membrane, uh, traditionally speaking, is done by every panel. And then they have an edge tape that they have a two inch overlap on. Uh, the edge tape is for convenience, not, necess it's not a necessity. If you're comfortable working with the membrane, you can just apply it like this. Um, these joints here, you can see it's a rough cut. It's a plastic, so the knife doesn't follow a straight line in a lot of cases. So you have a two inch overlay, okay? And this is where the waterproofing technology comes in. This membrane, done according to specs from the factory, comes with a manufacturer's warranty of 10 years. You won't have water getting behind your wall. That's better warranty than any other product on the market. Um, so now this is all done right to the ceiling. Just a quick warning. This product is available at uh, wholesalers and retailers around town. If you buy it at a retailer, make sure that they have the proper product available for sale to apply the product. Uh, I've seen on a couple of occasions where there's uh, major, major retailers that offer Schluter system that don't have the right cement to apply it. So if you ask for the cement that goes with it, 
the salesman may just offer you whatever's on the floor. Uh, it will fail and fall off the wall and it's dangerous. So just make sure that you've got a product that is a non-modified cement. Okay. All right, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to install Curdy board from Schluter in your tub surround. Make sure you are 100% waterproof. Okay, so in the building world today, we've got a lot of different materials available for building and waterproofing a shower. Uh, I believe in one of our previous videos, we showed you how to use just regular drywall and use the Curdy membrane, that orange mat, and cement that on the walls and create your seal for waterproofing. But in this video today, we're gonna to show you a little different system because Curdy makes its own wall panel. And this is half an inch thick. It's a polystyrene. It's got the waterproof membrane on it and it just reduces everything down into one step. One of the benefits of this board is that you can actually use it to create your own custom niche and you can cut the hole after you've installed your wall while you're tiling to create that shelf right on the gravel line. We're not doing that in this particular project. We'll do that again some other time for you. Today we're just covering how to install it and the basics of it. So the stuff comes in three foot by five foot panels or four by eight foot sheets. I've double checked. It's available at both of the major building stores. The only downside is neither of them carry the Curdy Fix caulking. So if you download the instructions or look online for how to do this properly, you're going to be disappointed. They do not carry the caulking. I'm not exactly sure why. It's not exactly needed, but we'll leave that to Schroeder to answer that question. So what I've done is I've just pre-cut my panel. I prefer to buy three four by eight foot sheets. And because when I do the math, I have a five foot and then a three foot, a five foot and a three foot, and then control wall. So that's three panels, it's nice and simple. And I never have an issue. If I buy the three foot by five foot, I've gotta buy three sheets just for this wall, because usually this wall is six feet and change, and that's maddening. All right, now here's the deal. This board is cut at five feet, and my hole is a little bit bigger, and that's fine. They come with hardware, this wonderful little clip system, and that clip right there has got teeth in it, okay? And so what happens is you put it on the polystyrene, you press it in, the screw goes in the middle, into the stud, and then it, you screw it until, until there's a depression, all right? And the way this works is that depression gets filled with cement and a waterproofing membrane layer, little two by two square, and that is the entire system. As soon as you put that on, this is built like a submarine. It can go 10 stories beneath the ocean's level and no water is going to get in there. Now these clips are supposed to be installed every 12 inches on the stud, every 16 inches apart. Your bathroom may or may not be framed like that exactly. Not to worry, it's a very rigid board so you can get away with a little bit of slack. Now, in our particular case, our framing is quite odd because we are back-to-back -back showers here. So I'm going to have a larger cavity. So I'm going to take advantage of this stud even though it's really quite close. Oh, love the Phillips screws. Because these boards have got these wonderful grid lines on them, and we're just doing a substrate, nothing has to be exactly perfect, it makes life really easy. I can actually put that board there, eyeball it, mark my spot, and I can just cut the whole board without any straight lines. All right. Breaks a lot like drywall. And it just has another membrane on the back that's very similar without the lines. So you just cut it and then you shave it. Now, if you're transporting these large sheets in your car, all you'd have to do is cut across the backside, snap it over, and you can make it half as thick to shove in your car. And then you open it up to install it and you still have a continuous joint on the membrane which means you still have a waterproof layer so that's a very handy trick to have just for get started we'll throw a couple of washers in go about a foot down there we go that'll lock that in place time for the next board this is an awesome way to measure we can just go over here identify where the other board is And then we go over here. All right, so we just eyeball this. Take an extra quarter off. You don't need to be flush to the ceiling with your wall board. All right, it's okay to you have your board a little bit short as long as you're only doing a shower. Now, if you're sealing it all up to do a steam shower, you also have to waterproof the ceiling. 
At that point, it's not going to be an issue. But for a standard shower, if your wall board's a little bit short, and I say go for it, make it ease of convenient. And look how easy that is to install. No fight. Put your clip right on the joint and compress the joint together. And go like that. Now when the last step, just as we're about to tile, we're going to mix up our non-modified cement. And we're going to do a curdy tape joint along these joints here. And we're going to cover all of our screws with little squares. And then that's the entire waterproofing system. So remember, all you need to know is you keep these things every 12 inches up and down the studs. Try to put them on every stud that you can find or 16 inches on center. Use these special things at the joints and a utility knife to cut and you can waterproof like a pro. So I found that one of the best secrets is get the two long walls on first, leave the control wall till last, crawl in here and then just measure off your finished wall board to the center of the plumbing fixture which oddly enough turned out to be 16. And because we use a laser level, all three will be the same. Now we want to measure from the top of the integrated tile flange. That is six and then 17. I want to get all my measurements at once and just have them handy. And that's 65. Now, all we're going to do is translate that information onto this board. So around here, that's my center line. That's my center line. Okay, so I'm at six inches. And I'm at six, 17 inches. And I am at 65 inches. Okay. So now I've got all my measurements. All I need to make my holes is a utility knife. Now if you like, you could use a hole saw. <laughs> Seems a little extreme, and I'll tell you why. Up here, we're gonna have a shower head, and it's just a half inch pipe coming through the wall, and the water starts here and goes down. So the likelihood that up here it gets wet, very, very small. So you can cut yourself a nice, moderately sized hole just to, for convenience sake, okay? And there we go, that's for the shower head. Down here, I've got a shower control. Now, my cover plant pan is about five inch round, and it has its own gasket that seals up against the stone, so I'm not really that concerned about water getting in behind that part of the wall either. So I have a rectangle that I wanna cut that is about three by three inches. That's where I'm gonna start. Okay, and then for the tub and spout, of course, same thing, it's just a half inch piece of copper. And so just to help make it simple, I'm gonna cut about a one inch hole. Gonna slide it all into place. Alrighty. Okay. Now the secret here to knowing where your wood is is you go down to your tub and you just look for the screws because that's not just attaching your tub, that's marking it. Alright? And that is how you know your studs. I only have a screw here and here. I'm going to fill those two lines. I'm going to screw the outside edge as well, but because the old drywall is sticking out a little bit, I'm going to take a minute with my utility knife and cut that back before I close it up. And tighten it up till it dimples. There you go. So now all I have to do is go along, finish all of my screws every 12 and 16, and I have to cut a couple little strips to go beside the tub down to the floor. Oddly enough, that is the one part of the bathroom that seems to rot out the fastest. It's the most important. So make sure you keep some spare material around just for that position. And once we mix up the cement, we'll show you how to waterproof this. 
So here we are, we got all of our board installed now. It's all the clips are in. You can see where we use the clips on the joints so you can kill two birds with one stone. The only thing that's really left to do is to finish the waterproofing process by closing up these joints so that they're waterproof. Now, if you're not familiar with the Schluter product, this is their joint tape. It's kind of similar to doing drywall. Really, we're gonna just cover it over. Now, you need to use the right kind of cement. And so with anything that's waterproof, it means it resists water. I want to use a product that is going to um, get harder and harder and harder over time the longer it stays wet. So since the water isn't going to get absorbed into the wall, I use a non-modified cement, which is old fashioned for cement. <laughs> and I use that to make all these adhesions because I found that trying to use any other product, it just starts to peel off. So I know Schluter makes their own all set product now that's good for any application. That's rather expensive. You can just buy a regular boring non-modified cement and it'll save you a ton of money. Really simple. This stuff is actually, um, uh, it is a plastic, it's a woven cloth, but it's difficult to cut with a utility knife. So be really careful. You're actually better to use scissors when working with this kind of stuff. And of course, if you need to know how to mix cement, you can check out some of our other videos we've done on the Schluter waterproofing system and tile videos as well. Now, let's get into this. This is really kind of straightforward. I'm gonna actually demonstrate back here. Now I installed this board a little bit shy on purpose, okay, as a demonstration. This is not meant to be rocket science. Really, we're just gonna put this membrane up to the ceiling and we're gonna just physically measure it right down to where it overlaps right down to the top. And like I said, this stuff is a little tricky to cut. Yeah? So you might want to use some scissors. And the idea here is that we install this. We want to have it come down over top of the integrated tile flange. All right, so that our waterproofing goes right down and diverts everything right down to the tub deck and then into the tub if any water gets in behind the wall. So just as a note, if you're buying this stuff at the local building store and you don't want to spend a lot of money on tools, you can just use your regular four inch knife. Just apply it pretty liberally and don't try to squeeze it out when you're putting it on. Now Schluter does make its own tools so you can get all the thicknesses exactly correct. But honestly, as long as you're just a little liberal with this, you'll be just fine. Now you take your membrane cloth and you fold it over in half and just run it off the tub a couple of times. And that is a great way to put a seam on that cloth and it'll aid in the installation so you're not fighting with it the whole time to put it into the corner. Then you can just place that in there. Bam. Just to reiterate, the waterproofing system operates because this product and this product both repel water. So water can't force itself behind that joint once that's dry. There's just not enough space for water to get a foothold. And they've tested this stuff out, something like four stories beneath the ocean floor is the amount of pressure it takes to force water through that joint. And since we're not in the ocean, we'll be fine. So the recommendation from Schluter, of course, is to have about a two inch overlay. This tape is four inches wide. And there we go, that's installed. Now that joint is completely waterproof. So butt joints are pretty much the same. Of course, you're gonna make a mess with this stuff, so don't worry about it, you can clean it up later. Again, you wanna have a two inch overlap over there. There we go. Okay. Now, as far as the cost of this product is concerned, I'll be honest with you. If you're using this product, it's because you want your bathroom to be waterproof, uh, hell or high water, okay? This is, this is not cheap product, and it really works. But to give you an idea, one roll of this at 16 feet is $30. Each one of these four by eight sheets is $100, $110. So you're looking at a five or $600 investment in materials alone just to waterproof and build your shower. Of course, if you're putting on expensive stone and you want it to last a long time, this is a great way to make a heavy use kind of shower last forever. 
the way that we finish the waterproofing of the system is everywhere where we have a penetration, we need to seal it up as well. And so we're going to add the cement, put these little squares over top of the hole, and press them all tight. Now, that area there has the same degree of waterproofing as the joint. Again, guaranteed walk away, never going to have an issue. Generally speaking, if you're a homeowner and you're buying this product at a building store, there's one thing you can't buy because they don't sell it, and that is the Curdy Fix. And it's an adhesive caulking. This is not it. Part of their warranty program requires you to use that at the base of the tub to seal the wallboard to the tub. Now, they don't sell it at the hardware stores. Neither of the two major brands do. So you're already buying a product that you can't get a warranty for, and so you've got to be creative to create that seal. So what I have found, and we did this on a couple of projects earlier, we made a cedar cooler for my deck. We're using the LePage 2-in-1 Seal and Bond. This is made for interior use, so the fumes aren't very terrible, and you can use this to seal up your gap at the, at the tub. There's another way you can do this. You can also cheat and seal up these holes. <laughs> You're going to love this. Now, this doesn't dry very fast, so if you use it, you need to give it a couple hours to dry. But I'll give you an example of what happens here. One tube of caulking is $9. One sheet of this is $30 bucks plus cement and plus plus. Sealed. Waterproof. Now, I don't know about you, but if I wasn't in a hurry, I would do this all day long. Come back and tile tomorrow. Because the design is made for a two inch overlap at 40 feet below sea level, since we're only waterproofing something on the back of a shower, you don't have to be all that concerned with the math. If you're even close, as long as that hole is covered, even by a quarter of an inch, I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna have a problem. So don't get all paranoid about it. So since you don't have any Curdy Fix and you've gotta find a creative way to solve this problem, you could use the membrane right over under the tub, or you can just take your caulking here and this is of course a special material that will bond to just about anything and you can just run a nice thick bead along the bottom okay bam and then just smooth it out with your thumb a little bit get a little pressure in there so you know I'm bonded all around the corners you can do up the side as well there we go that's about all you need to know for waterproofing a shower with the Schluter system wall board and the Curdy strip uh, if you like this kind of video give it a thumbs up uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do so. And if you have questions about why I did the way I did it, you know, I always ask that below. Uh, we answer those questions every single day. We're happy to do so. That's our forum for having these discussions, so use it. Today's how-to video is how to waterproof your shower. Um, we are using the Schluter Curdy system and the Curdy membrane and the prefab shower pan linear drain. So before we get started, we do have a video on our channel for how to put on this membrane. And in that particular case, it was a tub surround and we showed you how to do it one piece. So in this video, I thought I'd show you the other technique uh, using the Curdy tape. This is called Curdy band. And the basic principle of this membrane is really simple. This material, when it overlaps with itself, creates a bond that water can't force its way through, okay? Each of the, this material has a property that repels water. So when you cement them together, it makes it impossible for water to work its way through there unless it's something ridiculous like over 50 feet below the sea level. And we're never gonna have that kind of pressure on water in a shower. So that's where the waterproofing system comes from. So basically what we've designed, or Schluter design, is a system where if you apply all of these products and have an overlap, then that force that repels water, as long as you have a two inch overlap, it's guaranteed for life. Now they're giving a 10 year performance warranty on their product, which is why I use this now exclusively. I like being able to give my clients that kind of peace of mind. So when we're applying this, you know, you don't have to think of it like a roofing system. You don't have to go to the bottom first and then overlap the top and then do all the details. You can do it in any order that suits you. So you can do the walls, you can start at the top, you can do the nook, you can do the extras, you can do all your corners first, if that's what you prefer. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have a good overlay, it's gonna be waterproof. So to waterproof the whole shower is probably gonna take me about an hour and a half. So instead of making you endure a 90 minute video, watching me fuss around with all this cement, 
I'm going to show you all of the elements and then teach you some couple of simple tricks. And then you can watch the other video. Between the two of them, you'll have plenty of information there to do the job yourself if you so choose. Now this tape is really simple. It comes as a flat piece. It doesn't have a pre-designed crease in it. So what I do is I fold it up nice, run it over a pail. Now I got a crease. Okay, nice and simple. It applies very similar to drywall mud, drywall taping system. So right over our substrate, we're gonna get our cement here. And we're gonna just fill up our gap. Now this cement is a non-modified cement. Very important, use the right product when applying all of these membrane products. A latex modified cement does not bond to these products and it will fail and you will not get a warranty. Another good reason why if you're gonna have somebody in your home doing this system, make sure that they can prove to you that they've taken the Schluter course and that they're certified to install this product. My experience is most guys in this industry think that if they've watched the DVD that comes in the box, then they're certified. And that is just not the case. There's a lot of information that they hand out in a two-day seminar, a lot of practical, hands-on type stuff. And if they haven't been there to take that course, then they're not committed to the product and they're not committed to making sure that you're getting it done right either. There we go, nice and simple. So now, to finish this wall, all we need to use is just a big roll of this stuff. Roll it out in the cement. Again, you've gotta use the right tool for the job. So when you work with the Schluter products, use the Schluter tools. It's not the end of the world to buy a couple more tools. Schluter Curdy, this is for the membrane. It has its own notch. It's designed for its product and its cement. And so you use this to apply it. It sets the right thickness on the wall. In the same regard, if you're doing the flooring system, they have a Dietra trowel. Again, it's their own notch. These are not available on the market outside of the Schluter name. Nobody makes tile trowels with these kind of gaps in it. So don't try to improvise. Demonstrate now how to do the inside and outside corners. And these are awesome. You can't just take this product and cut it with a knife and make a corner. This is sealed. There's no joint. It's manufactured this way so that you have the perfect lap on an inside outside corner. So what we're going to do is just demonstrate where and how to use it, how to apply it. Now you can see this outside corner because it's a shower nook, it's too big. But because what we need for this product is a two inch overlay, I don't need it sticking all the way out into the wall. So I can feel free to cut it back, maintaining my two inch overlay. And as long as it sits in that corner nice like that, I'll be fine. So that's ready to go. Here's an outside corner. I'm gonna bring it, same principle. It's too big for the situation. So I'm gonna cut it back a little bit. Now, I'm good to go. So same principle with working with the cement. Speaking of cement, Schluter does make a cement. I think they put their name on a product. And it's available at some manufacturing, distributing places, wholesalers. Uh, I still like to use the Mapai Carabond. Comes gray and white. And I'm gonna give a shout out to them. Silky smooth, always applies nice. Never have a problem with it. So we're putting on our corner now. Get the joint right in tight to the wall. And at this point, it's nice to have a second tool. So what you do is you can hold the crease there and use your second tool to smooth it out. It doesn't take a lot of cement to make a good bond. Okay. There we go. Now the same thing there. Hold the other side. And this can be worked and manipulated a little bit to make sure you get a nice edge. If you put too much cement in the corner, it makes it very difficult to tile. So try to keep it thin. So now we're just gonna add a little bit more cement over top of the, that new corner and do the inside corner. Same principle, put the knife in the joint, run that out.
the whole while trying to keep everything as clean as possible. And when you're done with your overlap, clean off all the excess cement. Now I realize in a lot of situations, you know, we go a little overboard, we waterproof up above our heads. It's extreme. This is not going to be a closed in shower with steam. So what's the point? Well, here's the thing. You have an overhead rain shower. It doesn't make a lot of mess. You don't get water everywhere. But when you're done, you take off the wand and what do you do? Yeah, that's right. You're firing water everywhere. You're washing down your walls. You're filling up the cavity in the shelf with water. That's probably going to get more water is when you're cleaning than when you're actually having a shower. So that's why we take the time, make sure our ledges are sloped. Everything is waterproof and sealed up. And that is the key. In the Schluter system, whenever you buy a, a floor shower pan package, you get inside outside corners for the shower pan. You also get these little gizmos. These are awesome. If you can use them, they're great little additions to your toolbox. The idea here is a lot of shower valves are, they come with a round housing, just a simple cylinder, a couple mounting screws and then a, and a round plate or a square plate and they've got a gasket. You don't really need a waterproofing gasket, but if it fits and you can make sure that you have a nice joint and a little something to divert the water so it can drain back out of underneath, if it gets there, then why the heck not? So the same thing applies here. They have these little things. These are awesome. Now, in most showers, you don't need to put a gasket around a shower head. Water's never going to get up there. But nowadays, there's a lot of people using this system where you'll have an elbow here going to a water line on a hose attached to an adjustable slide bar. Now you're dealing with a hole in the wall that's lower that's going to see some water. So it's best to waterproof this area right here. And this gasket, if you can see on the camera, it has a really thick edge here. It also has a thin extrusion here. That extrusion is going to be in my way. There we go. So now, same rule applies. Take our cement. Whoa! And you'll notice it is a little bit sloppy. I do that on purpose because you don't want this product drying too fast. There we go. So now that the back is cut off, it's nice and flush on the front. We can just apply this nice and simple. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put down our curb. Now, my curb is a bit of a cheat. When I bought the shower pans, they were extremely large. They were, each of them were uh, five feet by five feet. So I had a lot of excess material. So what I did is I took a couple inches off the highest part of each of those and I'm going to use that as my curb. I'm going for a really low profile look here because I wanted to get the biggest shower I could in this room. So I'm designing my own curb. I'm going to tile the both sides. I'm going to use a little marble seal on the top. And that'll play off the accent tile in the shower. Let's take our sloppy cement and we set it in the ground. It's important that when you're doing something like this, pre-cut and measure, have it all ready to go. Know that you're going to be happy with the final result. You don't want to start messing around with this stuff and then having to cut it down afterwards. Now when I'm doing my last pass here, I'm using the side of this notched, setting it. That way I'm leaving a, amount, a certain amount of cement up against the original pan. So when I'm setting in my curb, I don't have to be back buttering anything. I just set it right in that. Done. I'll put a little bit on the end and bond those joints together. Now here, it's just a design situation, so I have my my shower drain, my linear drain, it's, it's extending a little bit past my floor pan. So I've just notched my curb. When I open this up, you'll see that my finished floor, here while we're talking about it, let's show that. Here's my drain. Now right now there's a plastic guard on top of this, but this will be covered in tile. I'll have tile come up to each side and leave a grout line. So I've actually designed this curb 
so that when my tile comes down this side of the curb, it finishes right next to the grout line. This is as low profile as I can make it, trying to save as much room as I can for the toilet area. So this is just part of the flexibility that comes with the system. Once I have that curb in, I can then take my smaller knife and I can just mud all over, all over. That's the best thing about this system. When in doubt, just cover it in mud and work out the rest in the wash later. <laughs> now I'm not worried about how pretty this looks. I'm waterproofing this. When I go put my sill on, I'm going to be adding a pretty good piece of cement just so that I make sure I get good adhesion and I have the ability to level and slope it. So if this is a little wrinkly, it's not going to affect the performance. Here we go. So this tray has a integrated waterproofing flange that's part of the drain system. And so when you're doing your waterproofing, it's necessary to make sure that this is all pressed down into place. It's hard to do one part without the other. Again, hold the edge against the wall. A little bit of a system like wallpaper here. We want to just kind of move all of the excess cement and air out of the way. Now you can see the curb has a, or sorry, the pan has a ridge here. That's designed for the application of the cement so that when you're all finished, it's kind of like drywall tape in here. You can fill that up and then your tile has a nice flat surface to rest on. It's a good idea, but they've been using that in drywall for the last 60, 70 years. Get this part down here. Okay, so there are a lot of different products on the market. Uh, I know down in the States, they have a lot of competition down there. Up here in Canada, we have a few products that are trying to mimic some of the aspects of the system. Um, traditionally, waterproofing was a roll-on membrane, and that worked great. It didn't have as much flexibility. So the reason I use the Schluter system is because of the testing that they've done. There's a lot of newer products on the market and they don't combine well with other products and other technology. So uh, we went through years of trial and error trying different products, so the fiberglass walls, cement boards, uh, different membrane systems, different roll-ons. And unfortunately, you always had to mix and match different technologies to get the look and the performance that you wanted, but it didn't always work out very well. And so at, after a lot of trial and error, we've settled in and using this product because of the one fact. They give a 10 year warranty if you install it properly and you don't ever have to think twice about it. So that peace of mind, not just for my client, but for me, it's worth its weight in gold. In today's video, I'm showing you my system for a very cost-effective waterproof shower. You don't have to break the bank to make it great. If you're a homeowner and you've been on the internet recently and you're researching for ways to waterproof your shower, you've been inundated with products. My God, it seems like there's a huge niche for do-it-yourself shower renovations because let's face it, the building code is really substandard in a lot of regions around the world regarding this matter. So where I'm from, we're allowed to use drywall and adhesive and stick tile on the wall and call it done. And I think it's embarrassing. Now, they've recently changed that. At least they want you to use a water-resistant drywall, but that's just garbage that's going to last a few years longer. And so we have a lot of showers that are going five to ten years, and then they're failing. The problem is they're in brand new homes, and they're failing in homes that have really nice materials and great finishes in them. 
And so people are having ceilings coming and getting all water stained and walls where the paint's peeling down and mold issues related to shower junk that's not even 10 years old. It's got to stop and here's how you do it. So if you want to invest a ton of money and you're afraid your shower is going to fail, there are ways to do that. But if you want to get something done that's not going to cost you more money than the tile itself, then this is the system. Go with the mold resistant drywall. This has got a mold inhibitor and it is really fabulous because even if your system fails, it'll give you another 20 to 30 years before the mold grows through. So right there you've got a 20 year shower. And the way you make it even better is instead of adding drywall compound and taping these joints, because the drywall compound is really going to cause you problems, use the Lepage 2-in-1 sealant bond. This is an adhesive sealant that we can use on traditional waterproof systems, okay, the orange membranes or all the different boards that are out there. This is the kind of sealant that they use. So they have rigid panels that you actually use a sealant to seal the joints and that's supposed to give you a lifetime guarantee. So you can use that in here as well. You just stick it in the corner, put on a decent healthy bead. This stuff is made for interior use so it doesn't have a lot of off gases. So you don't have to worry about it smelling like exterior caulking. When you're done, you just run your finger in that bad boy and press it down. Okay, of course it helps if you install your drywall where the butt joints are nice and tight. And if you have any leaks or holes, plug them up. Now wipe this off before you go too much further because that stuff is really sticky. So now we have walls that are all sealed up. Fabulous. The way we're going to finish that, of course, we're going to use a roll-on membrane. Now, there is more than one membrane out there. There's a MapEye product called Aqua Defense, and that's a nice product. We have that in one of our project videos, but today we're going to talk about Red Guard. Yeah, this is great. It's in your local building store, so you don't have to go hunting to find it. You can just go down to the local building store and pick up a pail. One of these will take care of your shower, no problem at all. But there is a way to put this on, and there are cautions that are in really, really fine print that most people won't read on the back of the label. So what I'm going to do is go through a couple of demonstrations here for you and show you how to apply this stuff. Now, we're on a project here today, and our client who's going to sell this house has agreed to allow us to use this product because it is still ugh, nice and pink. <clears throat> And before I put this on, I want to emphasize, according to the building code, what I have here right now is already good. I'm already up to code. <laughs> the fact that I've used a, a sealant in the corners instead of drywall mud, I'm now above and beyond code. And as soon as I dip my brush in here, I am making the code embarrassed, okay? So here we go. This is a, it's kind of like a paint, but it's really thick. Okay, that's ridiculous good, right? And it's cut and roll like any other paint. Now that adhesive there, I put that bead on about 15 minutes ago. That stuff sets up incredibly fast, so it's really convenient to work in this kind of environment. All right, and just want to lather it in the corners. Be really liberal here, okay? Now, if you're really concerned and you're picky, you can paint across the top. Truth is, the majority of waterproofing that needs to take place in a shower is from about here up to about there, and then this whole wall, okay? Outside of that, you're really wasting your time, but for posture's sake, we might as well just do the whole thing, right? You want to brush in the joints of the drywall. Now these joints have been pressed together when they were installed, okay? And when you put two coats of this stuff on there, it'll create a bond and that'll be totally sealed up and waterproof as well. And just like you're painting a wall in your house, Cut the bottom and cut the sides. They have a little bit more control with a brush than you will with a roller. Boom, boom, boom. And once you've picture framed this thing, you go out and get your roller. Okay, now I like to use a mini roller for this following reason. This stuff is just so thick. If you put a large nap roller and you fill it up, half of that can is gonna be inside the roller. And you're going to spend all day long loading it up and cleaning it out when you're done. This is really not a lot of square footage. And the truth is, if this takes an extra couple of minutes, it's worth it. Because these little mini roller refills that are on the end of this, they're only a couple bucks each. And I would rather just throw it in the garbage than bother trying to clean this up. 
This is not about coverage. This is about density. You really want to get this on thick. You can't do it in one application. All right. So the trick to this program is paint it and then paint it again. And then if need be, paint it again. You want to have this nice and thick. Okay, when you're done, you don't want it to look like paint. You want it to look and feel like a membrane. You'll notice when I'm painting here that I haven't done anything to fill the screw holes. And I'll tell you why. This is how I gauge if I have enough. I've done one pass. I'm going to do another pass. I'm going to do another pass. When that screw hole is just a solid pink dot, then I know I've got enough on the wall. That's just my own little way of doing it. So now I'm just going to go and finish the rest of this off. So here's the thing. When you look at this, you're going to see different shades now. Okay, you're going to have pinks and reds and purples. You really want to be careful here. You want to wait until it's at least tacky before you do the next coat, or you're just pushing it around and you're not getting another layer. So when you see that dark red color, it's dry. It's about as fast as it took me to do the <laughs> brush and roll this thing. It's ready for another coat. Okay, so that's that's fresh pink, right? You see the difference? On camera there, Max, you can see that? Okay, so we're gonna add another layer now. And I'm thinking you're probably best to do three, just so that you don't have any thoughts. I mean, if you're gonna spend 50 bucks on the tub, you might as well make sure that you got your money's worth. No sense trying to save $7 and not get the third coat on. Especially when it only takes a few minutes, all right? This is one of these places where it just doesn't make sense to cut a corner because the, your value or your effort is just multiplied. The seal is gonna be 10 times better at three coats than it is at two. And it'll only take another 15 minutes. Okay, so here we are. We're just gonna do another coat. Now listen, every condition will be different. Temperature, humidity. So when you're in your house and you do your second coat, if you're really happy with it and you got a great coverage, then just be good. But if you need a third or a fourth, and by all means, go ahead and do it. You be the judge. But the point is, is you want to have a nice, thick coat. All right? That's all there is for waterproofing the shower, the old-fashioned way. We've been using this technique for over 40 years. All right? So don't worry about spending all that money on those fancy products. If you just want a shower that's going to last 20 years, and then your tile will probably be really ugly by then anyway, and you'll need a new shower. So this works out really good. <laughs> okay, so listen, if you like this kind of content and you like seeing the old school kind of stuff, then hit the like button and uh, ask your questions below about waterproofing systems. We'll answer those for you every single day. We like to keep in touch with our viewers, so uh, looking forward to hearing from you. We'll talk again soon. Well, thanks for watching. Now listen, here's the details. I'll break it down to you real quick. If you use a roll-on, it's probably a 10, 15 year shower. And that is usually plenty for most people. If you're not investing a lot of money in the shower systems and the wall tile, that's a great system. It's quick, it's fast, and you can do that in about an hour. The other systems out there are all different varying degrees of waterproofing and vapor proofing. Now listen, these are all great, but remember this, as long as you're having a shower pan or a tub, and you're gonna have two different building materials joining together, you run the risk of having water damage at some point. So the best system out there is complete waterproofing, floor and walls, make it all like one great big submarine. But I'll let you decide what's best for you and your budget, because the more protection you want, of course, the more you're gonna end up paying for it. So listen, thanks for joining us today. If you like these kind of videos, give us a thumbs up. I'd like to know your opinion on our compilation video series, so throw some comments below. And if you have questions, feel free to ask in the same section. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, or you're new to our channel because YouTube has just been bringing it to you for the first time, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. We got a lot of great information out there for DIYers and home renovators alike. We'll see you next time.